Welcome to Contact Centre Showcase and this special edition, uh, Lessons from the Lockdown. And my guest today is Natasha Telecki from People Solutions. Uh, who is, she is a general manager or GM for emerging markets. But uh, Natasha, why don't you tell us a little bit about your role in the company? Thank you, Rod. And thank you for inviting me to be a part of your show. People Solutions are a training provider. Uh, we've been around for approximately 17 years. Our core market is within the GBS space and the contact center BPO space. Uh, we train roughly a thousand learners per annum in uh, what's known as accredited skills development programs and learnerships. So in the South African market and context, we offer formal and informal training in our market. And those are in alignment, the formal uh, qualifications we offer are in alignment with our sectoral education training authorities, our CETAs. And with many South African companies, that's usually closely aligned to the broad-based black economic empowerment strategy. Um, and it measures the skills development spend based on a scorecard. So we predominantly have operated within that space in the accredited training. But we also operate in the informal training, which is becoming increasingly more important as we realize that years of experience and job-based experience um, often is really important and far more valuable than doing a once-off formal qualification. And my role with it, within People Solutions is GM of digital transformation and emerging markets. So I drive the sales strategy, the product and innovation strategy, and the marketing strategy. Okay, excellent. Now we're going to take a bit of a back step um, towards the end of last year, coming into January, February 2020, pre-COVID. What was your view and potential for training skills development in the, particularly the BPO GBS sector? Looking back at the 2019 fiscal year, the work from home and remote working models, along with remote learning, had already started to gain significant currency. And People Solutions, being members of BPESA, joined BPESA and the DTI on an outbound mission to India to attract foreign investment in the offshoring space. And we attended the NASCOM conference in India. We brought back significant learnings from that conference around the future disruptive technologies and some of the future skills that would be required within our operator environments in the GBS and contact center space. People Solutions embarked on an exponential growth strategy and we developed a massive transformational purpose and our MTP was to take digital and future skills and learning access to the last person in the last town in South Africa. So we embraced our digital transformation strategy by partnering with a leading award-winning startup known as Digimi, and we built a micro-learning platform. We did it in a record-breaking time of six months, um, something that can take up to three years to build and develop. And it was based on an algorithm that measured for mastery as opposed to passery. Um, we launched the first phase in October last year, and that was around future skills and some work readiness skills and also some bridging skills for those returning to the workplace. So that was the outlook and we were on a growth trajectory um, pre-pandemic. So in some respects I'm hearing that you were preparing for, um, without knowing the, the, the future, but preparing for remote learning, remote uh, coaching and so on. And then along came uh, early March, middle of March, and the lockdown, the, the news that we would be going into lockdown. Now, how did your organization and your clients respond to that, particularly in the learning and development space? Yes. So uh, you may know this about me, Rod. I used to work in motorsports. So I'll use a racing analogy. When coming into a curve, you don't break hard into the curve. You kind of drift through it so that you are prepared to accelerate and power up as you exit. I will say that 
years of digital evolution have taken place over a matter of weeks and the things that we thought were completely impossible in the world of work have suddenly become possible because they've had to. Uh, we are in the fourth industrial revolution. For those of you who doubted that and for anybody who thought we wouldn't, we are. And the consumption of media that has taken place and the use of media and application and technology over the lockdown periods and the current crisis are testament to that. You just need to look at the number of new subscribers on, say, a Netflix, which is around 16 million over you know, the last quarter. So I'm very fortunate in that I work with a small team, but an exceptional team, with a lot of experience in the GBS space and BPO space. Our CEO has over 30 years of experience and our management team around uh, 20 years of experience in that space. So my key accounts and national sales manager comes from a BPO environment. My instructional design and innovation head has years of learning methodology, design experience. Um, he came from an education background and our operations teams have years and years of experience facilitating and moderating within the space. So we all got together, we spoke to our clients, we reached out to them to find out how they were feeling, what was working, what wasn't working, and were operators already migrating to the work from home uh, type setup for agents. And we realized that uh, South Africa as a market had somewhat different challenges to other markets in that many of our agents were based in remote locations and we needed to look at how we got to them in those geographic locations and reached beyond the tier one cities such as Cape Town and Durban and Johannesburg. So we had to come up with really creative and innovative ways of executing our, our learning and we came up with a number, a number of solutions around virtual delivery, um, combining the use of mobile, SMS, um, data light bite-sized pieces of information, and just documenting that process so that we could ensure that we are prepared for the future when uh, similar situations hit. We evaluated consumer behavior and we noticed that the types of skills that our agents were dealing with um, in, with new consumer environments was slightly different. So that, you know, they needed to understand how to deal with stress, how to lead teams remotely, um, how to have critical thought process and uh, a different cognitive ability, um, a certain amount of EQ and social skills, listening skills. You've got consumers from all generations that are now dealing with tools and technology that they may never have dealt with before. So our agents need to be equipped to handle it. And you also have debt burdened um, consumers and uh, very stressed consumers who are dealing with uh, job loss and unemployment. So matching the type of customer experience and customer service levels that you want to deliver um, during a crisis uh, in an uninterrupted manner to the types of skills that you are training for. And in doing so, we discovered a number of challenges. So the access to devices and laptops and uh, the internet and broadband, uh, some landline issues versus mobile and the costs associated with that. So um, it will in the future take a lot of collaboration between industry stakeholders, government, um, industry bodies, our clients, and our network and telecommunications providers to look at how we can change and develop that infrastructure, invest in it, and reduce the costs associated with reaching our, our learners and our consumers. Just now we, we will look at, and I'll ask you some questions about your view of the future, but right now, how have you found, particularly the younger generation, adapting to a work from home model, number one, and are they absorbing the kind of skills and the training that is now being delivered remotely versus classroom based? That's a great question, Rod. And there's been an ongoing debate around this for some time in the learning and development sector. 
how do we verify that it's the learner? How do we assess remotely? How do we, you know, get that uh, human interaction? And with the development of facial recognition software and cameras that can verify individuals, um, voice recognition, biometrics, um, there are a number of ways that you can mitigate the risk around that. And we've been collaborating with the services CETA and other industry um, training providers to see whether we can come up with creative solutions on how we deal with those risks um, and how we find new ways of doing things. Uh, when we return, and there will be a return to face-to-face -to -face execution and learning interventions um, through a, a delivery methodology, we will need to be cognizant of the fact that social distancing is definitely here to stay globally. And as a result, we are implementing a stringent OHS guideline that um, will be in place with all of our learning interventions when we do need to continue with face-to-face -face operations. Right, and this brings us to the view of the future, the unknown future, the crystal ball. Um, assuming that lockdown and the world returns to a whole new normality in the next three to six months, how do you see the actual workforce going forward? Do you, do you envisage a migration back into the bricks and mortar, particularly contact centers and TBS and BPO, uh, or do you see it being focused into the remote or work from home environment. And if I could just add to that, we, we know that we are just bombarded with so much information coming at us and we've had to find new ways of sharing bite-sized information with our learners and our facilitators are discovering that you still need that connect between the trainer and the learner. So we've had to think about the data restrictions and come up with new ways of doing things like sending voice notes um, and SMS and sharing videos via WhatsApp and having short hookup sessions for a Q&A after we've shared a piece of information. So you can also share your, your assessment um, documentation and activity books remotely so it's making sure that once you've shared that information in an on-demand data-like way that you then do have a live interaction a virtual interaction to engage with the individual and make sure that they can voice any concerns they have or try to gain an understanding of any areas that are not clear and we've just had to rethink how we do things and that's definitely going to be the norm going forward so the younger generation are obviously a lot more prone to adapting to that and we know that their consumption differs significantly in the millennials and X generation compared to the Zs and the boomers as an example. So we consume different things, we prefer different modes of communication. But um, as long as there's the basic concepts and methodology around learning, the spaced repetition, the um, making sure that the information is done in a way that it sparks interest and will be retained and transferred into the long-term memory, we should be able to emerge from this with a new way of uh, interacting and uh, sharing knowledge. Lastly, two or three lessons that you and your colleagues um, have learnt in the last six or eight weeks um, during the time when COVID-19 has impacted on our industry. What have you learned? Lessons from the lockdown. As I mentioned, don't cut back on the necessary training expenditure budgets to ensure that you're future fit. Invest in the uh, technology that you need to do that. Get into SHAPE, um, and SHAPE is an acronym it's have a startup mindset, remember the human at the core, so remember to have the interaction, accelerate your adoption of your digital transformation strategies and the use of those tools, be purpose-driven, 
match your training and your gap in skills analysis to the kinds of skills that your agents and your employees are going to need to excel and thrive in the future and collaborate as part of an ecosystem as People Solutions do with the likes of Pepesa and the DTI and our stakeholders and operators within the GBS space. If I look at comparing the virus and the current pandemic to if your, you look at your business in the same way or yourself when you contract a virus, what do you do? You stop, you take your temperature, you uh, hydrate and medicate and rest and look to recover and then you start to take necessary steps to avoid future exposure or um, contraction of viruses and mitigate the future risk. So do that and invest in the ways and the skills that you need to mitigate that future risk now for the post-pandemic era. Get your uh, inoculations and your boosters ready for the future and the next crisis and there will be one. And if I can leave you, Rod, and your listeners with a stoic quote from Marcus Aurelius. Objective judgment now at this very moment. Unselfish action now at this very moment. Willing acceptance now at this very moment of all external events. That is all we need. Um, it's not just how we've reacted to this crisis, but how are we going to show up beyond it? So make it scalable, make it portable, and make it matter. Well, hopefully we will have uh, the end of this phase of lockdown and we'll move into some sort of a migration back into the workplace and back into this interesting world of new normality, whatever that might be. Thank you, Rod, um, on behalf of People Solutions for having me on and we are so grateful that you're doing this series. Uh, it really is making an impact. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Natasha Terlecki from uh, People Solutions in uh, Western Cape. Be safe, look after yourself and we'll chat again soon. Thank you so much.